Hi, thanks for joining me today. I've got a really cool proof of the four color map theorem. Let me say what the theorem is and then we'll get stuck into the proof. So the theorem says if we have a planar graph G, then there exists a proper four coloring of G. So what do we mean by this? So what is a planar graph? Well, it's simply a graph where the edges only meet at vertices. So for example, a graph, say like this, um, something like this. This is planar because none of the edges cross one another. However, for example, if I had this edge here, this graph all of a sudden is no longer planar because this edge crosses this edge, but I can kind of get rid of that by doing that instead. So provided none of the edges cross, we have a planar graph. And we want to prove that there exists a four coloring of G. So what is a coloring? Well, for each vertex, so each of these circles here, we're going to assign a color. So this could be blue, say. This one is red, say. This one is yellow. And let's say we have the fourth color, green, like so. Um, it, what we mean by a proper four coloring is that no vertex is adjacent to another vertex of the same color. So for example, this one's blue, so I can't color this vertex here blue because then it would be adjacent to another vertex which is blue, so I have to choose another color. Similarly, this vertex here can't be green because this one here is green. So we want to prove that there exists a four coloring of G. Uh, so given the graph G, we can color all these vertices in a certain color such that no two uh, vertices of the same color are adjacent. Now this was a problem which went unsolved for quite a while and the initial solution to this uh, problem or this theorem uh, involved a lot of work with computers. Now I've actually lied to you a little bit when I stated this theorem because I cannot prove this like this in a nice way today, perhaps in the future I can, but today I'm actually going to be proving a slight simplification or a slight, um, you know, a slight simple case or a special case of this theorem, theorem here, and that's when G is a planar graph, but also it's triangle free. So it is triangle free. So by that I mean there are no triangles in the graph G. So this wouldn't be allowed because here we have a triangle. So that's essentially when we have three uh, or a subset of three vertices where each vertex is adjacent to each other vertex in that set of three. Okay, so this is not a triangle free planar graph. If I say remove this edge, now it is a triangle free planar graph. Anyway, this is the theorem I'm going to be proving today. So essentially the four color theorem with where we insist that it, uh, it is a triangle free uh, planar graph as well. Anyway, I've waffled a lot for now. Let's get stuck into the proof of this theorem. Okay, so the first step of proving this theorem is to state and prove a lemma. Here's the lemma. Let G be a planar and triangle free, I suppose to say graph. Then there exists a vertex V in the vertex set of G with the degree of V being less than or equal to three. So in other words, you give me a planar graph, which is triangle free, and there always is, is going to be at least one vertex, which has degree at most three. Let's prove this. Let's take a planar graph G, and the first thing we're going to do is use uh, Euler's formula. So this applies to all planar graphs, and that says that F minus E plus V equals 2. I'm not going to prove this in today's video, but hopefully you've seen this before, and if not, just go ahead and look this formula up. So F here is the number of faces in the drawing of G, E is the number of edges, and V is the number of vertices. And it and Euler's formula says that this here is kind of like an identity. Now, if our graph is triangle free, and um, what we're going to do is consider a face of our graph. So let's just pretend we draw, I don't know, let's say our graph G looks something like this, say. I'm not sure, let's add on another face like so. Now, because it's triangle free, then any face, so let's say look at this one here, any face is going to be kind of enclosed or like kind of surrounded by at least four edges because if it was only surrounded by three edges then it would contain a triangle so for example if i add this edge and we look at this face this guy is surrounded by three edges but look we have a triangle there so every single face is enclosed by f at least four edges but also the number of kind of for each edge kind of corresponds 
to two different faces. So we've kind of double counted. So in fact, we get that 4f over 2 is going to be strictly less than e or less than or equal to e. So 4f over 2 is less than or equal to e. So the number of faces, we're multiplying them by 4 because, well, we're, oh, the number of faces for each face, there are four, at least four edges. Um, however, we kind of double counted because each edge corresponds to two faces. So we get this inequality here, 4f uh, over 2 is less than or equal to e. And of course, this just simplifies to 2f is less than or equal to e. So if we just go ahead and plug this into this uh, equation here, perhaps let's rearrange it first. So we get that f from this thing here is just less than or equal to e over 2. So bringing everything onto that side, we get f is equal to e minus v plus 2. So then e plus minus v plus 2 is less than or equal to e over 2. Uh, bringing this e over 2 onto this side and v onto the other side, we get v is bigger than or equal to e over 2 plus 2, right? So... So, because g is planar and triangle free, we've got this inequality here, then plugging that back into Euler's formula gives us that v has to be at least e over 2 plus 2. However, if we have that the degree of each vertex is at least 4, so suppose for contradiction this statement doesn't hold, then that means that the degree of each vertex must be at least 4. Well then, recall the handshaking lemma says that the sum of the degrees of the vertices is equal to two times the number of edges. So then if we add up the degrees, so sum of the degrees of v, of v and v, that's supposed to be two times the number of edges. But then this side here is going to be at least four times v. So this thing here is going to be bigger than or equal to four times v, if we're supposing each vertex has degree at least four. So that tells us that 2e is at least 4v, and then rearranging this gives us that e is at least, or e over 2 is at least v. So we have that e over 2 is at least v, but simultaneously e over 2 is, if I get put this on this side, is at most v minus 2. So that means that 4, sorry, v minus 2 has to be bigger than or equal to v. So v minus 2 is bigger than or equal to e over 2, and e over 2 is bigger than or equal to v. So that means v, v minus 2 must be bigger than or equal to v. So minus 2 is bigger than or equal to 0, which obviously isn't true. So that means we've arrived at a contradiction, and thus there must be a vertex v which has degree at most 3. So I hope that has all made sense, and I hope you've managed to follow this. That's the proof for this lemma. Now let's use this to prove the main result about the four-color map theorem. Okay, so now let's move on to the main proof of the four-color map theorem. And remember, we have a planar triangle-free graph, G, and we want to prove that there exists a proper four-coloring on G. The way we're going to prove this is by induction on the number of vertices of G. So we're going to let the number of vertices of G be n, and then proceed by induction on n. Now, the base cases of n equals 1, 2, 3, and 4 are, in fact, all trivial. If we have a planar graph with just up at, at most four vertices, we can just give each vertex a different color. And, of course, there are only going to be at most four colors, and there aren't going to be two different vertices of the same color, let alone two vertices of the same color, which are adjacent to one another. So certainly that's the theorem proved in the base cases. And now let's suppose it holds true for say n equals k. And now let's look at n equals k plus one. So we have the number of vertices of g is equal to k plus one. And what we want to do is try and prove that this graph here also uh, contains a proper four color. Well, from the level we just had, we can find a vertex v with degree less than or equal to three. So find vertex v with degree of v less than or equal to 3. And of course, this exists by the lemma. Now, we, what we want to do is take this vertex and remove it from our graph. So we're going to consider g tilde to be the graph with g, but we take out the vertex v. So essentially, we have our graph g, we remove the vertex v, and we also remove any of the edges which uh, included v as one of its kind of uh, neighbors. Okay, so now we're left with a smaller graph, 
But remember, G, what we, what we started off with, was planar and triangle free. And it's not too difficult to convince yourself if you take a planar graph and remove some stuff from it, it's still going to remain planar. Because if there are no edges crossing before, if you're going to remove things from it, you're not going to make somehow make uh, two edges cross. OK, so it's certainly going to remain planar. And similarly, it's going to remain triangle free. If you're taking stuff away from the graph, there's no way all of a sudden you could construct a triangle from that. So G tilde is still planar and triangle free, but now notice that the number of vertices in G tilde is just going to be equal to K, because that was K plus one, but now we've removed one vertex. So G tilde is a planar triangle free graph with K vertices. So by kind of our inductive hypothesis, by our assumption, there exists a four coloring on G tilde. So there exists a proper for colouring on G tilde. Now we want somehow want to use this proper for colouring on G tilde to construct one on G. But remember, we chose V to be the one with degree less than or equal to three. So if we perhaps think of G tilde, say being, I don't know, something like this. I'm not sure, something like that, say, and uh, the vertex V we had was, say, this one here, which had to, uh, say, did something like that. Okay, so it's, th that's our vertex here, V, and in this case, it's got degree two. Well, now, because we're assuming that there's a nice four colouring on G tilde, so let's say we just call this one red, this one yellow, this one blue, this one green, this one red, this one yellow, this one yellow, um, this one blue, say. So this indeed is a little four colouring on G tilde. Now, because V has the degree at most three, that means it has at most three neighbours, and that's going to constitute kind of at most using three colours. So certainly there's going to be one colour, at least one colour left that's unused. So we've got G, the green as a neighbour of V, and blue as a neighbour of V, but we can still choose yellow or red in this case, and we can paint vertex V that remaining color. In this case, we've got two remaining colors. So it doesn't matter which one we choose. Let's just say we choose yellow. And now we've got a four coloring on G. So let's just quickly go over what we did in this last step. We took a graph G, which had K plus one vertices. We removed the vertex V, which had degree at most three. What we're left with is a, a graph with um, just degree, uh, sorry, with the number of vertices just k, and by the inductive hypothesis, we can give that a four color, a four coloring. Then this vertex v that we kind of removed temporarily, we're going to add back in. And because it only has at most three neighbors, but, and we're allowed to use that up to four colors, there's going to be at least one color kind of not given or not associated with one of the neighbors of v. And hence, we can just prescribe that color to v, and then we're going to have a nice proper four coloring on the graph g. And that completes our proof by induction. Anyway, I hope that has all made sense and I hope you have enjoyed this video. Of course, this is not the, the complete four color theorem because the four color theorem applies to general planar graphs, not just those that are triangle free. But the proof of that is not too interesting actually. It's just done by kind of reducing the problem to a bunch of cases, actually quite a lot of cases, and then testing each one by computer. Um, so it's not super interesting, but the proof of this, I think, is a lot more interesting. And also, you don't need to know, uh, don't need to know too much graph theory for it. Um, and yeah, as I say, hopefully you managed to follow along and I didn't clickbait you too much with uh, the title of this video. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this video and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.